Shalom Aleichem, everyone. As the Fabrengen turns back here to the North America and our shores, in uh, just a moment, we're going to see a promotion for the One Mitzvah campaign. And I want to encourage everyone to take the opportunity to click on the link and to open up Okay, our microphone put to Okay, are we ready? Can you hear me? Okay. So shalom aleichem everyone as the Fabrengen returns to the shores of North America and this side of the world. Yashikayach to all the Shluchim, Tmimim, and Anash in Eretz Yisrael and Eretz Akedish. In a moment, we're going to see a promotion for the one mitzvah campaign that Rav Meshach Katarski spoke about, and is, that is the Hachlata of this Fabrengen of Kayach Nissen. So at this time, I want to encourage everyone not just to watch the promotion, but to actually click on the link and to see how easy it is to establish your own account and how simple it is to simply send an invitation to other people. It follows in the same format of a charity campaign that we're familiar with from fundraising efforts. You simply send a link to others and you don't even have to do the work. The system does the work for you and mitzvahs come in in Mirz Hashem to bring us directly to Mashiach. Yashikayach, the link is available right under your live stream. It's also available every so often in the chat box, and you can take a look. At this time, we're going to have the schus of hearing from a mashpia who is in the yeshiva in Toronto, the Lubavitchi yeshiva, by us here. I'm also living here in Ontario. And um, I wanted to first mention that in the Chesidah Parsha this week, we learn that in the bracha, the birchas hamitzvahs, we see baruch atavaya. Then it says alikenu melech ha'elam. The Alter Rebbe asks a simple question: either it could say alikenu malkenu, or it could say alika melech. Was that just alikenu and then melech ha'elam? So the Alter Rebbe explains that in order for the Eibushter to be melech ha'elam, first he needs to be alikenu of Am Yisrael, because Yidden are the pnimius of the Velt. And how do we make the Ebishter Lekenu through Limud Hatayra? So we now have the opportunity to hear from the Rosh Yeshiva, the Yeshiva in Toronto, the Lubavitch Yeshiva in Toronto, and Kana Mokim also, that all of us should raise our glasses and make a Lechayim, as Achsidashif Abrengin Kenufton, Kenafila Malak Michol Nishufton, Adrebishas Logevin of Akiva Gershin, Benochobasia, Rafu, Shlemo, Krevu, Mehera, Lechayim, Lechayim. Amen. After just hearing the words of the Rebbe that were played on the recording, that the Rebbe spoke how even when 10 Yidin gathered together, is a Dover She'ene Muvan Klau, that at such an event and after such an occasion, Mashiach shouldn't come. So, how much more so when we're gathered? Globally, Bechal Ha'elam Kulay, Bechal Katzve Tevel, and Yizin are gathered with the sole objective of Tan Alts, Tut Alts, to do whatever we can to bring Mashiach. Is how much more so is it unfathomable that such an event shouldn't bring the Gula Amitis Vashleima Bepeo Mamish? So I was sure that with such an event, we'll for sure bring the anticipated results that before I should have to speak. And it would be Bemela Gula practice as well. And uh, so this is a Dover Shane move on Klaw Klaw. Akopanim, 
L'chaim al-Abracha should be our kapanim now, the gathering should be payal pulase, the main thing that should bring the Seyrus by all the Mishtatfim, as Vaiduyas Pi'ilas, like the Rebbe always spoke, to bring to payal mamish, to actually bring the Gula. There's a machlekis in Gemara about Shuva or at Sadi Gomer, who is greater? One man, the Omer says that Sadi Gomer is greater than about Shuva. But Rabbi Vol says, the mocking Shabbat Shuva aimed him, Sadikim Gemura, Mainam Yechelim Lamech, and the Rabbi Shuva is greater, surpasses at Sadi Gomer. The Rambam Paskins that Rabbi Shuva is greater than at Sadi Gomer, the mocking Shabbat Shuva aimed him, Main Sadikim Gemura, Yechelim Lamech. And the Rugged Shavar says, what's the mocker of the Rambam? Is it Tamachlekis in Gemara? Why does the Rambam choose this opinion? It says the mocker is a Gemara in Kiddushin that says, a Mekadish as a Isha al Menas Shani Tzadik, a Filu Rasha Gomer Mekudash as Shema here at Shuva Belibe. Lachaira, even if he was here at Shuva Belibe, he's only about Shuva. He said, Al Menas Shi Tzadik. If a Tzadik is greater than about Shuva, it still should not be a good Kiddushin. So as the Rogit Shava from here is the mocker of the Rambam, that about Shuva, that the Halacha is like the Mandomer who says, Mokim Shabbat Le Shuva, Eimdim, Eim Sadikim Gemurim Yechelim Lamech, Shem, that about Shuva is greater than that Sad. The Rabbi asks on this two questions. In a letter to Rabbi Zevin, who brings quotes to Rogit Shava, the Rabbi asks one question, that the Din by Kiddushin is even Hita Lishvach, even if he said something that he's greater than what he really is, not only if he's worse than what his condition was, but even if he's greater than what his condition was, it's still not a good condition. So even if Abel Tshuva would be greater than a tzaddik, it still shouldn't be a good enough condition. And then the Rebbe asks another question that even like the Mandama who says that Makim Shabbat Tshuva in the main tzaddik in Gemurim Yechelim Lamech and that about Tshuva is greater than a tzaddik, that's with regards to Sechar Va'inish. But there's still a chisorin in a tshuva to, uh, compared to a tzaddik. And the fact that about Tshuva is Surei Ra, which means he, have, he has negative characteristics, he has ne negative traits. He's drawn to bad, he's pulled to bad. And therefore, since he has that negative aspect, it sh still shouldn't be a good condition. And because of that, in the letter, which is printed in a few places, the Rebbe rejects the Ragged Shavar. But in Lekuti Siches, that many, many people learned this week, in the project Lekuti Siches, the Rebbe only brings the first question, and the Rebbe answers that there's two different levels in Tshuva Me'ava. There's a level in Tshuva Me'ava in which he's greater than a tzaddik, and there's a level in Tshuva Me'ava which he becomes the equivalent of a tzaddik. So the question is, but what about the other question? Saf Kal Saf, even if the Baal Shuvah is equivalent or greater than a tzaddik, but he still has the chisari, that surei ra, that he has negative characteristics, that he's drawn to bad, like it says in various places. So the condition should still not be a good condition. which, how could the Rebbe say the answer and seemingly disregard the other question? And possibly the answer is, in this sikha, the Rebbe is differentiating between Shuva Meira and Shuva Me'ava. Shuva Me'ava, a Shuva that stems from loving the Ebishter from Atzimoyin and a Chukka, a thirst and a yearning for Elikos, automatically includes the fact that he's no longer Surei Ra, someone who loves godliness, someone who's drawn to godliness. We say, Oyeve Avaya Sinura, someone who loves Elikos, someone who loves Ebishter. It follows, it's inevitable, it goes hand in hand that he's no longer drawn to bad. He no longer is drawn after Taifas Elamaza and after doing Avedis. And like it says in Tanya, in direct proportion with the love for Alakos, is the miyaspara, is the rejection and the repulsiveness of Inyani Elamaza in general and Avedis specifically. And therefore, in this Sikha, where the Rebbe says it's a Tshuva Mayava and there's a level of Tshuva Mayava, that's equal to tzaddik. Also, it includes that tshuva meyava does, doesn't either have the negative traits, the negative characteristics of being surina. When the Rebbe wants us to live Mashiach, to want Mashiach, to sincerely and genuinely yearn for Mashiach, 
yearning for Mashiach is yearning for the ultimate gili of Alekos that comes when Mashiach comes of the row, kolbosar, yachtav, kifia, vaya, dibar, that our physical flesh, our physical nature will relate with and understand and care about Alekos and see Alekos, v'nikla, kveda, vaya. That's not separable from Mashiach. And therefore, living from Mashiach translates in our day to day life as Meliknisht and Taivaselam Haza, that we can't be as immersed in our enjoyments and our pleasures of worldly pleasures or Nevarat Vegidinyanim from Surmei Ra of Averis Chatz Vishalim, because it's inseparable, because Eyave Avaye Sinura. Because the Mios is a direct proportion with the Ava and loving Mashiach, loving the Gilea Likos and yearning for that ultimate Gilea Likos has to include hating something that's sunny, that's hated by the Ebishta. It says in the Rambam, in Hilchas Molochim and Molchamiseim, Val Yarech Beinyane Hagadis. The Rambam says, don't focus on things that we know about Mashiach and those the Rambam spells out for us. The Nyane Gula Mashiach, the Sugis of Mashiach, and the Halachis of Mashiach, and the details of what's exactly going to be the process of Gula. Besides that, says the Ramban, there's other Haggadis that are not clear, that we don't know, that are unknown. Al Yarech Be Nyane Haggadis, don't spend time on those Haggadis that are things that are unknown to us. And the Ramban says, why not? Ki Eina Mivim Loyli Yira Vilayla Ava. Because they don't bring a person to Yira and Ava Sashem. The person who's focusing on the Haggadis, on the Divrei Haggadah, the Midrashi Chazal about Mashiach, is doing it to gain a better understanding about Mashiach, to be more aware of the world of Mashiach. So the Rambam should say, learning about those Haggadis that are not conclusive is not going to bring you closer to Mashiach, is not going to bring the Geula closer. Which would seemingly be the objective of the person who's looking who's looking to do that. What's the Rambam saying? Al Yarich Binyani Agadis, because they don't bring to Yirav Ava. Seemingly because the Kachim Mashiach is inseparable. You want Mashiach because you want Abishter. And because you don't want something that's sunny, that's neg, that's Hepech Ratzin alien that's against the Ratzin of the Abishter. One thing Mashiach is inseparable from Yirava Ava. The Rambam says something that any maybe for the Yirava Ava is automatically not connected with Mashiach, and therefore those Agadis are not part of preparing and learning Mashiach. And therefore the Rabbi told us in this Sikha that we just heard in the historical Sikha of Chavches Nisim, that after everything that was done, what's the problem that we have? What did the Rabbi in such Hearts and Giverte complained to us that after everything that was done all the years, we're still in Golos. Mashiach didn't come yet. We didn't have the Geula Amitis Vashlema. Seemingly, that's enough. That's the problem. That's the complaint. That's why everything was insufficient, didn't suffice, didn't bring to the desired conclusion. But the Rebbe didn't finish with that. The Rebbe said, starting in words, seemingly, was nachmer. Is Ms. Nachaltin a Golos Pnimi in Yonim from Aveda Sashem, Kimiduber Kamapam? I think those were the Rabbi's words. That not only are we still in Golos, not only is I say, say no later, not only did Mashiach not come yet, but we're in a Golos Pnimi in Yonim of Aveda Sashem, because those two are inseparable. Because living with Mashiach has to go hand in hand with living, with appreciating our Av of the year, our appreciation of godliness in each way that that translates in our day-to-day -day life. And I'll emphasize, it's possible that someone should focus on Av of the It's possible that someone should be Achsidah Shiyid and Davim Barich and Zayna Emes Achsidah but he's missing the main point of Mashiach and I kachsuch nishta Mashiach, that could be. But the other way can't be. To Kachsech and Mashiach, the way the Rebbe wants us to Kachsech and Mashiach. So the Rebbe spells it out for us. That means that we want, that we Kachsech, we're Gans and Subtrasal, we're broken because we want the ultimate Gilia Atmos, the Gilia Likos, the way it is when Mashiach comes. And therefore, that has to translate in the way that we're living with Mashiach now. 
through familiarizing ourselves with the life of Mashiach and with the era of Mashiach in a way that that's so important, so real to us, that other things become less appealing to us, less palatable to us. There's a story, a Polish Maisa, that uh, there was a, one of the Polish Rebbes was known as the Triske Magi. He was the son of Ramatul Shanabula. And he was a, uh, from the very Derhebin Rebbes in his time, many stories about him. And he was known specifically to be a, to be a Rebbe, Kemenish Ligin in Essen or in Shlafen, that's not the way to become a Rebbe. But he was known even amongst the Rebbes of his time, specifically that he was very, very much Memayat in Achila and in Shema. He didn't eat and he didn't sleep. And once Rabbi Baruch Mezhebuzer met him, the grandson of the Baal Shem Tev, and he asked him, why do you eat and sleep so little? So he said, I don't eat because I'm too tired to eat, and I don't sleep because I'm too hungry to sleep. He was being deiche in the cash. And Rabbi Baruch Mezhebuzer was known that he didn't, didn't take, he took a strong stance, even with the other rabbis, that they had to comply with him. He told them, I'm going to pull you out of both elements. So he told them when I was a young child, four or five years old, my father, Ramatul Chernobyl, once woke me up in the middle of the night and he told me, Tizachan, get dressed. And he took me in the wagon and we drove and drove in the middle of the night. We drove into the middle of the forest. In the middle of the forest, we came to a hut. And my father got out of the wagon by the hut and a man came out of the hut, a man with a white beard who had a face like a Malach Hashem Tzvakis. And I heard my father go speak to him. And they spoke for a few moments and I heard my father say to him, And then my father got back in the wagon and we went back home. And I asked him my height. And he said to me, you know that in every generation, there's one person who's really, we is Mashiach, the Mashiach of the generation. My father said to me, that person who had the face of the Malach Hashem Tzvakis, he was the Mashiach of the generation. And he asked me, is it time to come take the Eden out of Gauls? And I said to him, is Nachnish great, as is Nachnish Tzayt. And the Triske Mag, etc. Baruch Mezhebush, Aduvaz Kahata Zatata. And you would hear So the story has many strange things about it. But one point I think is very powerful and very meaningful to us in an opposite way that living with Mashiach, and we also saw the face of Mashiach. We did see the face of Mashiach, but we saw the face of Mashiach telling us, to bring it because it's time, because the time can't go on anymore. So that has to translate by us that ligin in Mashiach, that we're involved and immersed and obsessed and preoccupied, I preoccupied with bringing this gula, this vashlema, take it from Yad Mamish, like the Rebbe said, is in a way that we can't be involved in our eating and in our sleeping and in our inyani ha'ilam. I don't know about everyone else, but I still am very, very much immersed in my taiva selam hazer. I still love chocolate, I still love pizza, and vasalasach. But the Rebbe told us that we're able to put it into practice, momato lamayla. The Rebbe said, live with Mashiach, tayameh chayim zachu. Learning the Yanegula Mashiach is not a subject. It's bringing it into our consciousness. It's bringing it into our focus, into our awareness. So love Mashiach to bring that reality which is within reach, it's within touch. It's some mochvenira, it's here, we can see it and we can touch it, to bring it so close that we could live the way we could imagine and know that we're going to live then. In Davening we say, Reimin maizkeil begrein am vechera pipiyes biyada. Taich zechap echstidis. Reimin maizkeil begrein am when a person thinks about the reimin maizkeil. 
about the aloofness, about the greatness of the Ebishter, being your name. You think how we're going to be sitting in a few moments and the Rebbe is sitting over here and all the Rabbeim are going to be sitting here and all the Tanaim and Amre Raim and the Nevi'im and the Avi Saktation. And they're all going to be preoccupied with Teira, Chadasha, Me'iti, Teitze, with Zvernik, Vero, Kobos, Ayach, Tachifia, Vayedime. How embarrassing will it be, whatever we're into now, the Hechere in Yanim, the Denidrig in Yanim, Kol Echad Lufum Shira Dilei. Like it says, Take and the Likuti Teira of next Shabbos of Emma, Vili Nevish, Vili Nikolim, Leilam Vay. Raymond my scale, Big Rain, I'm just thinking and focusing on the Raymond my scale, on the aloofness. And that's my middle matzev, that's right around the corner, makes a cher of pipis, biyadam, gives us a double edged sword, lara to kill, to push away, and to separate ourselves from any possible attraction to something that we know is going to be shameful and embarrassing to us when we're in that my middle matzev. Living with that world of Mashiach has to translate that we're living now in a way that reflects the fact that what we care about is this v'nigla kfeida vaya. And like the Rebbe said, that, the, that the, you could have the biggest giluyim in Gashmias and the biggest giluyim in Ruchnias. And nevertheless, as Ayid and Gansen Tzatresov were broken up, were shattered to pieces because we don't have the gili shar hanun, we don't have the gili asmus, we don't have the ultimate gili because the way it's going to be, take if me ad mamash when Mashiach comes. And this is something that could sound lofty. This is something that the Rebbe gives us and every person can start it on his level. It starts Pashat learning a shir, but not learning another shir, learning it and thinking about it and living it. If the Rebbe tells us now me is great on us to decide, the rabbi tells us now this is within reach, it's here. We could touch it, we could feel it, we could smell it, we could experience it. So we only have to do our part and we have to bring ourselves into that mindset. And in that mindset, then automatically we're able to implement it to cause that our way that we live, that our lifestyle reflects that. As nulept as as bayam is and automatically, automatically, the Gili Alekos and the Aval Alekos includes as Melat Nishtalibu Malik Nishtan Andrezach. I want to give just two practical areas where we should be, I think, focusing on this and we are able to focus on this. In one of the places where the Rebbe speaks so strongly and so powerfully about this, of course, like everyone knows, is the Maimur of Atatitzav. In the second half, especially, <clears throat> of the Maimur of Atatitzav, where the Rebbe speaks about the Kassas, which is the Kassas of our generation, where we have our Chava Begashmias, and there was our Chava Beruchnias, and nevertheless, Nobody is satisfied. I see them go make these big events and fabrengens and they go around shlichas and they do everything. Miznisht ruig because his negeya ultimate gilia lekos gilia atz mustigula mitzvah fashleim or take it from me out mamish. And the rabbi says there's this causes that the rabbi says this surpasses the mysterious nefesh of the Eden in Russia. This cuss is that even though you have her chava, it's not enough and you're not satisfied because you need to have the gula be pay homage. Where is this expressed? Where do we show this? This that we care more about the ultimate gula than any her chava that we could possibly experience. So the Rebbe says, we're in the mind. The Rebbe says, that's why every yid says every day in davening, that then will be Gilead, the coast is Gilead. Right? Everyone knows that. That's what it says in the mind. The Rebbe is not telling us that's what we're supposed to think when we say the Sechazanai name. The Rebbe says that is what is being meant and being said by every Yid who says the Sechazanai name or Dry Malatag, oh yes, three or more times every single day. That's what he means. That's what he's expressing, this yearning, this unquenchable thirst for Mashiach that's there, that no matter what harchava you have, 
you're not satisfied with that Gula Mitzvah Shleim. And it's amazing. Not just Lubavitch Achsinim. The Rebbe says every year Lubavitch that says three times, oh yes, sir, a day, the Sechzen Oineinu is expressing this kusses, this amazing tzitresel kai of being broken and unsatisfied without the gili of the Gula Mitzvah Shleim. That nothing matters, nothing else could give us satisfaction, not Gashmis, not Ruchnis. And of course, how many of us are thinking about this when we say, Again, this is not something that the Rebbe is telling us to do. This is what the Rebbe is describing what's taking place. So this is what every Jew is already saying when he's saying, What's left is hair of us is us. Listen, hear what we're already saying because we're saying it. Because the Rebbe is proving from us saying it that that's what our custis is, that that's the state that we're in. So take a few seconds when the Davish, when Esther, like the Rebbe says, Shalish Pamin by Yayim Oyeser, to hear Yishmuaz Necham Hashapicha Medaben, to hear what we're saying, to hear the Vesachazan Oyneinu Beshuf Chalitzim Berachman the way the Rebbe translates it and defines it, that this is this unquenchable thirst and yearning for Gili Alekuz Biz Gili When we feel that, if we give ourselves a little bit of time, a little bit of focus, a little bit of attention to hear it, if we feel that thirst automatically, it out overshadows anything else that we could want. But we have to hear it. Give a bissel tzai, give a bissel cup in them. And if I may add, if I didn't go over time yet, we say in the end of the avenue. No, Rabbi Kiva, you still have a minute. Thank you. Okay, I'll make it fast. <laughs> we said, never spoke about the Sechazena in Nenu, never spoke sometimes about a Semach David Abdel Mehmad Chamir Satsmiyah. We say in the end of davening, an unbelievable yearning of Mashiach, the Alkain, the Kaval, the Chavaya, the Kain, the Lyrics, the Heira, the Sefera, the Zecha, the Haver, the Lulim, the Minaret, the Sakin, the Elam, the Mouth, the Shin, the Ali, the Yod. The whole of the Alkain is just an un, unequaled yearning for Mashiach. We're already then waiting for our breakfast, for our supper, for our Chesish, for the last Kaddish, taking off our Tfilin. Take an extra few seconds. Put yourself into the mindset. The Rebbe gave us the tools. Learn, understand that it's a real thing. Understand what Mashiach is. Use those times that we're given, that we anyways are speaking about it and focusing, and focusing on it. It should be a little bit more mitayat, this should come into our day-to-day -day life. And it should bring us right away on the bridge from the world of Golos into the world of the Gula Mitis Vashlema. You shouldn't even have to wait till the end of the Fabrengian with Alarain Tansin and the Gula to Zam and Metali Yitn in Eretz Yisrael. Take it from me, Ad Mamish. L'chaim, L'chaim, L'brach. Amen. L'chaim, L'chaim, Rabbi Kiva. Tayyid Abrida, dear brothers, we just had a little taste of what it's like in the yeshiva in Toronto. Thank you for bringing us in to the Hisaidatus, to the inspiration and to the passion that you carry with you. And that Kenai Nahara, you've had this close for so many decades now to inspire all the Siddim and the Tmimim that came through the yeshiva with, after the Giyola, with the Giyola, that you should okay. continue to have the Gesund and the Kayach to inspire us all the way you have been until now. Amen. We're now going to have the Sfus to watch a little Keta, a little portion from the Sicha of Dalad Nisan Tafshin Memalef when we were all outside in that unforgettable moment saying Birchas Achama together with the Rebbe on Eastern Parkway in front of 770. And it'll be a portion where the Rebbe talks about how precious every single Yid is, every individual Yid. Allah has come and come when he finds a heart in God's kibshuta. He does a only bakneses Israel, was he fitzer and by no spiegel zachop wie das is by the meibesten, the avo zu jederin, a derse soll nicht sein und ne was für a meime du matze be soll nicht sein. A feeling only in all the protein, 
on duro druf verderinen ki ato yehevani ishi ametu tuf ech mitazaminidun o me machfuna ma ben yochid la kodush borchu echid begolui kum tarob de nisui ma kodush borchu en anifu fun yehevani ishi bechesed u berachmi o bekore mamosh und das wird in der Nähe von der Juve, an die ganze Welt seht, an jeder Ried, seht mir nach dem, an der Bnei Chide, Shalom Kodesh Borchu, wo Saben Yochid und noch näher wie der Baal Shem Tev Tach Tosov, ist doch verstandig, an der Vater Ravina Shabbat Shomayim, weiß der Reis die größte Ava, והחביבוס וסיכן זי. The next chassid is going to parbreng with us. He doesn't require even an introduction. Rabbi Simon Jacobson was the chazid of the Rebbe for the last number of years that we had the supposed to hear fabrengens. And I don't know if I have the right to even suggest which of the years is the biggest chus, but the fact remains that Rabbi Simon brought to us the Chazorah of the Fabrengans and the Hanochas, the transcripts of the Fabrengans from the years Tavshin Nun, Nun Aleph, Nun Beis, the entire, all the years of the Psuda Sagi'ula. And when the Rebbe talks about being able to see in this Keta of the video we just watched that every Jew is a Ben Yochid of the Ebishter, we saw that most dramatically in the Rebbe himself. The Rebbe clearly, as everyone could look at the Rebbe, see a Ben Yochid. And when you have someone who is called Kulei Rebbe, then that's someone that you want to listen from, listen to and learn from. So many years ago, Rabbi Simon Jacobson came to speak for Gimel Tammuz at an event in California, and I was there. And he told us a story about how when his first book came out toward a meaningful life, Wisdom of the Lubavitcher Rebbe, he came to a small bookshop. He said somewhere in the Midwest, it's been many years. So Rabbi Jacobson, Rabbi Simon, if I got some details wrong, I'm sure you'll be able to correct me. He walked in for an event that was scheduled for his for, for the book that he had written. And when he said that I'm the author of the, the book, The Wisdom of the Lubavitcher Rebbe, she looked at him, she picked up the phone and called her manager in the back room and said, he's back, the Rebbe is back. A person who personifies the Rebbe made it his life's mission to transmit the teachings of Chassidus and of the Rebbe in a language that's not only the language of the Safa Medubet, the language of our country, but also in a way that is applied. Applied Chassidus is a person with whom we want to fabreng. So we have the great schus, the great privilege of fabrenging with Reb Simon Jacobson. Please unmute yourself, Simon. Thank you very much. L'chaim to you, Rabbi Gurkov, L'chaim to all of the our fellow chassidim and to all of us who are participating in this mega event. And L'chaim Yeshukayach to the organizers, my dear friend Shleiman Apostik and his entire team and everyone at Merkis 302 and all the extended people who made this happen. And thank you very much for that introduction. I just have to qualify one thing, if I may. I, th she thought that I was Rabbi Schneers because it says the Rebbe's name prominently on the cover of the book, The Wisdom of the Rebbe, Rabbi Schneers. Um, it took a little while for me to re remind her that I was not Rabbi Schneers. I was someone that worked for him. I just wanted to make sure that's clear. But there was no question that this was in Lexington, Kentucky, of all places, a place where you wouldn't think that Mashiach lives and Chassidus lives, and yet simple folk working in a bookstore, not Jewish, for them it was a given that, uh, that the Rebbe could be back and that it's a given that the truth of the Rebbe's teachings and his ideas, which really is the truth of Teres Semes and Chassidus and Teres Chassidus, resonates and is a living reality in people's lives. So yes, indeed, I've seen this and there's no question the Rebbe's words, though it doesn't need any confirmation, but I've seen it, personal witness, seeing time and again how these ideas that are not just ideas, but people live with it, 
in a personal way, a taste of what will be when Mashiach comes, when people live with the teachings and the ideas and the directives and the guidelines of Teda. Now, I want to begin with a, a few feelings, if I may. I know that uh, throughout the last almost close to 24 hours since after Shabbos, this has been a Fabrengen, a global Fabrengen, with, with literally hundreds of speakers, Fabrengers from all over the world in different languages, different time zones. And uh, though I heard a few, but I can't say I heard most of them, I'm sure what was said was tremendous. But the first initial feeling I think is important to acknowledge, and I have no doubt that the Rebbe is listening to all of us, and of course the Ebersht is listening, is just to see children of the Rebbe, Siddim of the Rebbe, soldiers of the Rebbe, in their own way, in their own humble way. You know, we're Anoshim Kerkenu, none of us consider ourselves great uh, people, even though everybody has, I'm sure, a healthy ego. But relatively speaking, in the scheme of things, that's why we were so shocked when the Rebbe said, do everything you can. Because who are we? Miani, Umani, the Rebbe's not doing it. How are we going to do it? But the fact is, the mere fact that 31 years, 31 years, it's a generation, since that powerful day, Chofches Nisan, Tov Shinun Aleph, 31 years, 35 years, since the Sikha of, of Purim Tov Shemem Zayin, where the Rebbe essentially said the same idea, again, words we heard throughout this Fabrengen, and that we're here gathering together with enthusiasm, with energy, with passion, each in their own way, that alone should tear open the heavens. When you see the Rebbe would so often quote the word of the Alta Rebbe and the Friedrich Rebbe and all the Rabbeim, that the greatest nachas for a father is when he sees his children united together. And of course, the opposite is also true, the greatest aggravation. And what that, what Nafabrein can do, Malach Machol cannot accomplish. So that alone is in a sense, isn't that a fulfillment, a bit at least, of what the Rebbe asked of us, that maybe there'll be 10 of you that will come together and cry, Ad Mosaymetanemes. So as much as emes that we're capable of, the fact is we haven't forgotten not only haven't we forgotten, we're doing this fabring and we're doing tut alts, lefiyerech. We know bechol moidecha is lefiyerech, but moidecha, as much as you can do. Can we do more? Absolutely. Which brings me to my second uh, hergish and feeling that I like to share. And that is, they say insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results. So while we have to acknowledge the beauty of this achdus and unity, the fact that people are crying out from different parts of the world, we are trying our best, Rebbe, to do what we can to bring Mashiach and Gula, Chsidim, Shluchim, Shluches all over the world, men, women, children, are doing their part. Again, much more can be done. That alone is a very powerful thing. But at the same time, the Rebbe also taught us that we can't look back at what we've done. We have to look ahead. If the Gula Bapayal is not here, in the fullest sense of the word, that means something has not been done. And that's exactly the Rebbe's word, tut al So I think while we acknowledge this tremendous effort and everything that has been done the last 31 years and more, actually all the way back from the Rebbe's the beginning of the Rebbe's Nesias. So we're talking now 82 years, 72 years, I should say, from Tov Shin Yud till where we are now. But there's the other side of it, and that is action. At the end of the day, we must do something that has not been done till now. And it has to be derech yeshara. The Rebbe told us the way. We're not looking for radical, novel, new ways. There's a tater, there's mitzvahs. It's in that, those parameters. But the way it should be done has to be radical. It is the teyu and kelim the tikkun, using the Rebbe's words from Chofches. Listen. And I believe that's the second part of what the Rebbe said. Yeshlemer, the two parts where the one, he said that the hirotzen, two yehirotzens in the sikha. One is that there'll be 10 of you that will cry with a true emes, sincerely, from the depths of your heart, Ad Mosai. And the second, the last words, Hakel Chelech Achen What were the last words that Rebbe said in that Sikha? After he said that I will give, make you all a Shliach for Tzdok, he said, Vihi Rotsen, that among you we found one, two, three, Akaponim, that will Zuchzazamarein, Vosutan Unvitsutan. What will strategize how to do and what to do, and the Iker, 
that it should be come down in action. So clearly there was also a call to action. Not just to cry out. When I say just, I don't mean that to minimize it. But in addition to that, and it's interesting that the Rebbe we use the expression, where else do you find that the Rebbe limited these activities? Any mifza, mifza film, mifza kashrus, mifza, any mifza, the Rebbe said 10, 1, 2, or 3. And here the Rebbe used that number. So we can fabring about that. But I want to submit the following. And this is what I think is the punchline of it all. The punchline of it all is that the Rebbe was looking for true change that has to come initiated in some way generated by us. And he was hoping that there'd be at least one, two, or three. If there'd be more, great. He was hoping that people would sit down and actually strategize. So I would suggest, humble suggestion to us all, and especially to the VAD that organized this, to gather all the suggestions that were made throughout this, that will be made and were made and will be made through this 24-hour period, the practical suggestions, just to sum it up, one, two, three, what category it belongs in. Because this, in a way, is that's what we're doing. But it won't go anywhere if it just remains talk and it just remains on a recording. To actually gather together, and it could be it's hundreds of ideas, maybe it's tens of ideas, I'm not sure. But to put it down and then, then can be discussed and strategized and see some things are probably easier to do, some things are harder to do, some things are bigger, more global, and some things are more local. This is very clear. So I, instead of pulling and explaining, which I'll try to do a little in this discussion, but I really think it needs to come down to action because that was the whole call, call to action, they say, a call to action. But everyone has the big question. So what can we do and what should we do? And it's clearly something that has to come from us. Aveda is something that Kav Yochel, the Rebbe did everything he could do, Lamata, what a Rebbe does, providing us with chassidus, providing us with the tools, with the instruments, providing us with the inspiration and guidelines and direction, because without that, we wouldn't even be here talking about it. Let's be honest. Who would be talking about Mashiach if we're not for that? But then there's that effort on our end. And from the Purim Tov Shemem Zayin Sicha, it's very clear that there was a shift. Very clear. The Rebbe says that after Yigiyah, after the Rebbe's Yigiyah effort, the Rebbe came, the only answer he was able to find why the Geula didn't come in these decades since the Friedrich Rebbe announced it, Alta Lechuva, Alta Legula, the same question we're asking now. And the Rebbe said the only answer is that, went over, that it went over from Hanosi to Akoyal. So there was a shift. Something that we were not expected to do beforehand, because if we were, we would have been told. And now it's expected. And that's why the Rebbe stood to me that each one of us has to be involved in this process. So much has been said about this, and I'm sure much more will be said. But what can be said after 31 years that has not been? And again, within the parameters. So the big question a lot of people ask is, what does it mean when the Rebbe said the Berurim are finished? All we have to do is open our eyes. Many people say, where are Berurim finished? There's a war going on in Ukraine. There's murder, Rahman al -Islan. There's injustice. There are, there's, there, there's divisiveness. There's, uh, there are enemies. I mean, all kinds of things, terrorist attacks. In our own hearts and souls, there's a Yetzirah. Many people will say quite active. Where do you see a shift and a difference? An obvious question, a basic question. And if I don't see a difference, so how am I supposed to relate to what the Rebbe is saying? So I want to suggest to everyone that there's actually a letter from the Rebbe, and being someone who's worked in the Sikhs, as was mentioned, everything the Rebbe said in Tav Shinun and Nun Aleph and Nun Beis, Though there are definitely new things that were not said before, especially that the Berurim were finished, but the concepts are not new. Mashiach is not a new concept that was born in Tav Shinun or Nun Aleph. It goes back to the beginning of time. The Gemara in Sanhedrin says, The whole world was created for Mashiach. It's one of the, ten, the Yud Gimel Ikrim. We mentioned it six, seven times in the Shemayin Nasra. So I mean to say it's a fundamental principle. So... Everything that Rebbe said, you'll find in earlier talks. There's a, actually, there was a Kavitz Shubhas Biyurim. It was really Kavitz Labavitch that the Rebbe published in the, in the Shins. And there, there was a modern, a section called Shubhas Biyurim, which later became a separate booklet. And today is printed in Igris Kedish in volumes one and two of the Rebbe's letters. So one of the letters, which is in the summer of Tavshin Hay. So it's right 
close to the time when the Friedrich Kadeba began the Sturm, the storm about the Alta Lechuva, the Alta Legula. So there's a long letter that the Rebbe answers to someone who asks to explain the details about Chiyas Hames, about the resurrection of the future. But the Rebbe goes in his classic inimitable way with a long introduction to first explain the basis of Mashiach itself. This, in my opinion, is a must read. First of all, it's clear that ultimate clarity is fascinating. But I just want to refer to a few lines. The Rebbe says they are clear terms. And I'm, I'm just reading straight. This is printed now in Igris Kedesh. I'm looking at volume two, page Samaches, 8068. So the Rebbe says, Klolos habria be'ikra heleches umizbareres umishtalemes. That the general creation is in a process of evolution toward becoming a more refined and better world with some dips and ups and downs. But overall, the accumulative effect is a more refined world because every time you do a good deed, every time someone does a mitzvah, a mitzvah never disappears. Yichud Zela is forever. So it releases an energy that changes the world. And therefore, ultimately, we're going to come to a point where the world will become refined. And it's not the same world that existed 100 years ago, 200 years ago, and definitely not 1,000 or 2,000, 3,000 years ago. One of the things that traps in human psychology is that we think that we live in the here and now. We think everything has always been the way it is right now. And it's hard to imagine, we read in history books that there were the tragedies that happened in the last generation, the wars, and so on. But according to Pesach Amuna, and here the Rebbe documents it clearly, the world has changed, and not automatically, due to the millions, if not billions, of mitzvahs and mesidus nefesh that has happened through the generations. We must know that. Without that understanding, you can say, what, what's different today than it was 100 years ago, 200 years ago? Yes, it's an easier life. There's certain comforts. There's a democracy. No, these are not anomalies. It's actually real change. And second point, that it was always meant to be this way. The natural state of the world is not a world of war and not a world of evil. What did the world look like in Gan Eden before Odom and Chava came? So we all know Basilegani, the first moment of the Rebbe, Tovshin Yud Aleph. What does it say? Let's translate that in simple English. The world was a beautiful world. It was a garden. The famous Sikh of the Rebbe, Yud Shvat Tov Shalamet Beis, the world is fundamentally a garden. In contrast, even though he doesn't mention Freud and doesn't mention other secular thinkers, Darwin and others, in contrast to others, the Rebbe says, who say the world's a jungle, that a human being is fundamentally a selfish creature, the Tata says the world is a garden fundamentally, and a human being was created in the divine image with Salam al However, that was concealed through Chetet Sadas, as we learn in Basilegani. One concealment, another concealment, another concealment. And Avram Avinu began to reverse the process. And what's the conclusion in that Maimir the Rebbe's? That that's our job now. We're finishing the process, the seventh generation from the Alt Rebbe, like Moshe Rabbeinu, the seventh generation from Avram Avinu. Each of us must be able to translate this in simple English. To mention back to the story of Kentucky that, that you brought up and you introduced me. I have seen this in cities and countries across the world, places you wouldn't believe. I remember when the book, my book Toward a Meaningful Life was published. So I remember one of the editors, they were all almost Jewish, all living in New York. And to be su surprised, surprise, many of them never heard of the Rebbe even before. Maybe in passing, but definitely not in any serious way. One of my editors, who Leider considered himself a convert to Presbyterianism, Leilenu, but he was a Jewish guy. He was the editor-in-chief. And he said to me, I read your chapter, the last chapter on redemption. I was very curious to hear the Jewish perspective because I was born Jewish. And he said, I was blown away by it. I couldn't even sleep because I realized that redemption, what we call Geula, is not something that is a novelty that will happen. In other words, the world has always been, in his words, controlled by original sin, by negativity. And then something's going to happen that's going to change that. He says, no, it's always been a beautiful world that was concealed to the point that the concealment itself concealed itself, hasted aster ponai, famous tale of the Baal Shem Tev, that we don't even think, we think this is normal. 
the Rebbe wants the Yechida, someone has the Rebbe. Why does he cry out and why is he so passionate and so desperate for Geula, Mashiach? And I think it was a doctor, may, I'm not sure. And the Rebbe said to him, when, 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 when you recognize that someone is ill and sick, do you just sit around apathetic and, pa and passive? Or do you yell out and scream? We have to do something. Someone came into the emergency room. Goal, as the Rebbe said, is called displacement. Psychological, emotional displacement means we're not in a natural place. It's an unhealthy reality. It's an unhealthy perspective on yourself and on life. You think the world is controlled by selfish people. The Shayim gave it in by, it's true. On the media level, it may be that way, but it's not the natural thing. And when you know that, you cry out. So this editor-in-chief said to me, that to understand that the world is actually a beautiful place and human beings have that beauty within them. It's just been concealed and it took years, thousands of years to eliminate the concealments, to eliminate the forces that we call evil that in some way polluted the universe. And now we are ready to embrace the deeper essential beauty and light within it. He was surprised by that. This is basically translation of Vasilagani and a, a translation of Chis, the Hasidic, Hasidic approach to what Gula Mashiach is. So when you look in this letter that I'm quoting from the Igris Kedish, from the Rebbe, which was printed in Chubis Yibur and Kedish Slabavich, you have a picture the Rebbe describes, and listen what he says afterwards. The Rebbe says afterwards. And in general, there are three Kufis, three Zmanim. One Zman, Elam Haza, Yemesa Mashiach, with Chis Hamesim. Elam Haza, he says, is Man HaMolchama, Bein Hayesh, Baharuchni is a war. There's a battle going on between selfishness and selflessness, between inner goodness, transcendence, and your own self-interest and your own self-contained good. And the more powerful one dominates. Sometimes good prevails and sometimes the opposite. The second period, and he goes on to say, once this battle has been finished, he doesn't say suddenly the whole world will change. He says, we'll be able to see a person, we'll be able to distinguish between what is right and wrong. Whereas it was all mixed together, which is called Birurim, trying to clarify, trying to separate. And that point, he says that we can then look at it. The Rebbe doesn't use the words open your eyes, but essentially you see things for what they really are. People ask, won't well, we see today all kinds of negative things, but we see it. In that same Purim Tav Shemem Zayin Sicha, you know what the Rebbe said in the next Sicha after that? He spoke about it. What about all those negative things happening? So the Rebbe said that's also part of the, the process toward Gula because at the end of the process, the negativity is not concealed. It starts arising. It's like this, the grime that the comes out of the pores as a person gets warmed up. So you start seeing even the final thro the throws of the negative forces in this world. So I'm not going to read the whole letter, but I definitely recommend, especially in the spirit of everything we're doing, is to read this letter. It gives you, in the Rebbe's own words, because this is something the Rebbe wrote by himself. This is not a sicha hanoche that the Rebbe edited. He wrote it himself, even though hanoche the Rebbe edited is Kedush Kedoshim, he wrote it himself, a complete description of what Gula Mashiach is. So when you talk about what we're supposed to be doing, it's very clear that it's all about perspective. It's all about how we look at ourselves and at the world around us. And as I said, I have seen this play itself out, not among Chassidim, not among people who accept whatever the Rebbe says as Emes Lamite, that they see in their own lives, they see Gula emerging. They see it be emerging. There's a word that I heard, I remember when I was in Yeshiva in uh, Marstown, so our Mashpir, Abmel Svibal, all of our Shalom. So I asked him once, I said, why do we learn these deep in Yonim and Chassidus? Samachvov, Benayim Beis, Bechlal, all the Askolos of Chassidus. Even though we may understand some of it, but it's completely beyond us. We barely have to, we barely are able to reach Asiyah Ruchnius in our battle with our Yetzir Hoda and Nefer Shabbamis. Here we're learning about things in Yitzira and Beria Atzilas that the Alter Rebbe would tremble when he mentioned the word Atzilas. Let alone things, but Lifnei Atzimtzum. So he said he once had a similar question. He asked it to Rab Shmuel, Rab Shmuel of Vitten, Ashpian 770. And Rab Shmuel said, 
that he heard in the name of Gershon, of Gershon Ber Paharad, a famous chassid of the Tzamech Tzedek, that Gershon Ber Paharad gave once an answer the following with a moshel. Briefly, the moshel is that there was a king who was traveling in the woods with his, with his entourage, and he heard from a distance a beautiful melody, so beautiful that he was completely mesmerized. He never heard it before. And he could not get it out of his head and heart. When he came back to the palace, he said, you have to find for me the musician that was playing that. I never heard such beautiful music. Well, to the history grin, no matter what they did, they couldn't find that musician. They reached out to the entire empire, musicians from all over the world, playing songs and songs and songs to the king. And he kept saying, beautiful, but it's not it. It's not it. And that's what, what that was the, the end of that story. So Rabbi Gershon Ber told the Moshul, he said, when you learn Chassidus, it's the beautiful, most beautiful music that you ever heard. It's the most beautiful music reflecting the music of the Neshama in Lamaila, pure Ruchnis, Elokus. Then you come down to this world and you're made to forget. Every child is taught the entire Torah in its mother's womb. So in our super conscious, it remains there, as the Alter Rebbe says in the Kutta Torah Shlach. But our conscious, we're made to forget. The Malach makes us forget. But our neshama always remembers. And it's always looking for that music. So we learn chassidus because chassidus teaches us something about that music. And the rest of our lives, we're looking for that music. We look for it in our food. We look for it in our travel. We look for it in all kinds of pleasures of this world. Hopefully kosher pleasures. And when you, when you learn chassidus, you come to realize at least, sinishdos, sinishdos. So even though you may not fully understand what means Eden Sof Lifnat Simpson, or Elakuz Begali, Elakuz Bepshitis, and Elmiz Bishachus, but at least you know that the rest of the world, it's not that. I would like to suggest that the Rebbe came and did something even more. Not just to teach us what, that it's not, that everything that we enjoy in this world, as much as pleasurable as it may be, at least you know there's something more that actually gave us a taste of godliness. And that's what the Rebbe was both frustrated by and also demanding from us and saying, What's not that's what I did for 41 years. What did the Rebbe do? He gave us a taste of godliness, a fabrengen, not just the words, the negunim, and more than that, the passion, the total commitment. And what did the Rebbe do? He went a war against apathy. The Maimur of Atta Tetzava was mentioned before, and I'm sure others mentioned it. What is the Rebbe's clip? What is the clip of our time? The clip of our time is the apathy, the indifference, that we're comfortable. We sleep peacefully. I remember Time Magazine wrote an article about the Rebbe and Mashiach before Gimel Tammuz. A very positive article. And, and how the Rebbe brought the Mashiach consciousness into human beings. At the end, the, the writer writes, you can use this both positive and negative. He says, at the end of the day, Chabad Lubavitchers have not changed their summer plans. So on one hand, you could say it's a positive. We're not standing by train stations recklessly, just waiting for Mashiach. We're doing what we have to be done, what has to be done. But on the other hand, you could say there's also a certain we know about Mashiach, but still, we don't change our summer plans. The war against apathy. I don't really have a solution for that. I think that is our greatest challenge. And one more point I'd like to make and conclude with, and that is, until Mashiach becomes a tangible reality, for you and I, it's going to be impossible to communicate that to anyone else. So while we have to cry out, and that's why this gathering is so beautiful, this Fabrengen, we also have to do something to somewhat internalize it. I would make a strong suggestion to each one of us, including to myself, and something we can do with our children. Create a challenge. And the challenge is describe what Geula will look like if Mashiach comes right now, what will your house look like? What will the street look like? What will work look like? What will tomorrow morning look like? I brought this a number of times. There's a powerful letter from the Rebbe, Toiv Sivan. Yud Zayin Sivan, Toiv Sivan, Tov Shin Yud Aleph. First year of the Rebbe's Nesias. It's a letter to a person who owned the dry cleaners. The Rebbe says, everything we see and hear, the Baal Shem Tov says, is a lesson of Eidus Hashem. And what does the Rebbe say there? What's the lesson from a dry cleaners? You buy a garment, you wear it once, twice, three times. After a while, if you're a Balabatisha person, it gets wrinkled, it gets soiled, it gets 
stained, you can't wear it again. Comes the cleaner, the chiddush of the cleaner, the innovation. Yes, you immerse this garment, you bring it to the cleaners, they immerse it in water, in warm water, mix it with chemicals that get rid of the stains, then you dry it, put it under a press, a heavy press, and there you have, promptly you have a fresh garment and you can repeat this process many times. What's the lesson? Neshama she nesata the neshama is a pure soul, as we said, that's its natural state. Not a negative state, but then it gets soiled and it gets wrinkled and it gets stained by life. Deliberate mistakes we make, inadvertent ones, but it affects, it pollutes the soul. So you would think it's a one-way street. You can't do anything about it. Comes the cleaners and teaches us, no, immerse the neshama in ein mayim el teter. Teter is water. Not just water, cold water, but vadim kite, warm water, passion, chmimus. And then mix it with chemicals. Every mitzvah is another chemical that gets rid of another stain, another toxin. And then put it under kabbalist ale, oil of heavy press and accountability to something greater than we are, to the Ebershtet, Kabbalah Samachos Shamayim, and the Neshama reclaims its innocence, it reclaims its Tehedihi, and this can be repeated many times. A beautiful era, but here's the main thing. I read this letter approximately Tovshinun Aleph. Approximately this time of year when the Rebbe spoke about putting the Aleph of Elufish Shalelam into Gela, which makes it Gula. I was walking up Kingston Avenue and suddenly I noticed the dry cleaners. When do we notice a dry cleaner? Who even looks? You notice it when you need to bring your clothing there. But because of the letter, I looked at the dry cleaners and then I saw another one on Crown Street. One between Montgomery and Empire, one on Crown, one on between Union and President. Then there's one on Albany and one on Troy, whatever. And this is just Crown Heights. I noticed it because I suddenly remembered the letter and I never looked at a dry cleaners the same way again. The Rebbe gave us literally an approach of taking the Aleph. The dry cleaners is not just cleaning clothing. It's a marshal, a physical marshal for what? For the soul's regeneration, for the soul's renewal. Shkayach and everything that's, in this world. That's amazing. That's beautiful. Mashiach is coming in the Nefen of Achishena, so let's finish up also in the Nefen of Achishena. I will. I will. I'm, I'm summing up from here. So then I came to realize that this is what the Rebbe gave us, a lens, the eyes of the Rebbe, how he sees a cleaners. So then you could apply the same thing to bakeries and to pizza shops, and you mentioned chocolate, and to grocery stores and to everything, to astronomy, to physics. What in this world is not a moshal for elokus? Mepsari echze elaka. So this is something practical that each one of us can do and in our own sm small scale, a gili of alufish elelem in your personal life. And we educate our children in this way, this becomes at least one step that one that each one of us can somewhat bring the taste of Gaula Mashiach, which is the natural purpose and the natural state of existence, the perfected state, into our tangible reality. And today, thank God, we don't have the Xedas Vishmodis, we don't have the decrees, we don't have the, a world that we have to fight for our very existence and for our, our very rights. We can fabring like we do here. I made the Abish to help that we children of the Rebbe can cry out and say to the Rebbe, look, 31 years after your sicha, we're living with it. We're doing our best or we're trying our best. We will do even more and have a ready Rachmanis and bring the Gula Amitiz Vashlema after all the thousands of years of efforts and work and everything that we've done. As the Rebbe said himself, the Birurim are finished. And Vahu Yigaleinu, we can finally be Megala, the Gula the Aleph in Gaila and reveal and bring the Gula to be taken from Yad Mamish even before the end of this mega fabreng. L'chaim, my friends. L'chaim, chassidim. L'chaim, brider. L'chaim, L'chaim, Reb Simen. We can listen to you for days and days. It's wonderful the way you bring together and weave the Akira Vayedu Kobay Yelam. May every resident of this world acknowledge and know that Mashiach is on the way, but it has to begin with us, like you said. It has to be tangible to us. All the examples that you gave, I wanted to bring to everyone's attention that there is a booklet that's recently been printed. Hopefully we can soon post the link in the chat box called Living with Mashiach Bechol Asher Tasa, giving examples of how every aspect of life is truly a representation of the coming of Mashiach. 
We're now going to have the opportunity to see a short part of, of a Fabrengen that occurred on Yudgimel Tammuz, Tavshin Chof Beis, where the Rebbe talked about the importance of awakening the Neshama in every single Yid. Yashakayach of Simen. Thank you. And Spending Pesach here together. At our program, we wanted to do a learning component and we chose to use the curriculums by Tut Alts. I think that the both run editions, the adults and the children's, are terrific. I think this book makes it relatable in a way that I haven't learned it before, so it's nice to have it laid out clearly. I like having the book because it's fun to learn. I like learning from it and I, and I like new clean books. And We can see just from the last few moments how much Tut Alts and how much the Mashiach office has, has accomplished and how many resources they've provided for us over the last few months, just a little bit more than a year. The Rebbe asked for one or two or three Yungalaitos on sich einaction and to be stubborn to insist on the coming of Mashiach. Kana Mokim, this is a wonderful time to express our gratitude, our Akadas Atoy for the entire staff at the Mashiach office in Merkis 302, beginning with Rabbi Moshe Katlarski and all the way through to Rabbi Shlomo Naparstik and his wife. Um, and Rabbi Shlomo Naparstik wanted to make sure that we emphasize the fact that this is not an effort that is put together by one person or by a group of people, but that this is an effort that can only be successful if we galvanize the entire Lubavitch and the entire Jewish world. And so that the stubbornness seeps through from Merkis 302 to all of us, and we all become Tutaltsnikis, and indeed, to as we saw in the previous video, to ignite the spark in the heart of every Yid to find the natural connection with the Yebishter that every Yid has. And I don't know another Yungerman, a Shliach, who can more adequately inspire and empower us to bring out the natural vadimkeit, the natural warmth of a chsiddish and neshama, then the shliach is going to bring with us now Rabbi Shalom Meshe Paltil from Fort Worth, Washington. Not only does he accomplish so much in his local shlichus, but he has taken upon himself a much broader shlichus to inspire shluchim worldwide with the many, many initiatives that he has undertaken. But on a personal level, I have many reasons to be makertav, to be grateful to Rabbi Shalom Meshe 
for many, many nuggets of inspiration that I've received from him throughout the years. And I'm sure that among the 175 of us that are on here, we many of us have also been inspired by Rabbi Shalom Aisha. So please make a l'chaim Shalom Aisha and share with us some words of inspiration. And please keep an eye on the clock because at the half hour point, we're moving to the next presenter. Please unmute yourself. L'chaim, l'chaim. L'chaim, laser. You know, you could spend a whole uh, 23 minutes that I have left just explaining the Reichkeit of this Fabrinian, but it's obvious. L'chaim. So I was invited to to Fabrin Yutas Kisle by Ashliach. This is probably almost 20 years ago. And he had a big masiba of Makurabim, you have 300 people at dinner. And at the end, he invited back to his house the closer people. You know, just the men, the Chevre who, who come to learn, who are up and vague, so to speak. And we're sitting around the room, most of them not uh, Labavacher looking, but you could see they knew the Nigunim and you're sitting and Fabrin a whole night with the Shliach. And uh, at some point, two, three in the morning, I was very inspired just seeing what goes on. So I said to them, you know, I'm, I'm done. Now you guys talk. Tell me what brought you to Merevim, to Yiddishkeit, to Frumkeit. Tell me your story. We're on the whole table. It's one large dining room table. And everybody told the story. A, a Perik Tanya brought them, a share from the rabbi, I don't know, JLI, the wife's chalant, a smile from the baby. I and mean, each one has a story. What triggers their... Their, uh, their path to to Rebbe, to Eibishter, to Yiddishkeit. And then there was one guy sitting right across the table from me, dressed with the whole Lubavitch garb, like a chassid looks on Yutis Kisli, maybe the only one at the table, and a young man. And I said, look him in the eye, and I say, no, tell me, what's your story? Who brought you? And he says, the Rebbe. So I made a quick calculation that if he looks the age that he is, if he is the age that he looks, he maybe knew the Rebbe when he was 10, 11, 12, maximum. I said, you mean a video? He says, no, the Rebbe. I said, what do you mean? So he starts to explain. He says, I was a part of a, a Jewish youth group, very secular Jewish youth group, Zionistic, nothing to do with Frumkeit or Tater Mitzvah at all. Somewhere in the Midwest. And the year end trip was to New York. We were told that we were there in October, that you come to 770, this big shul. So Chastaita, forget about it. It's the best, the best experience. So we went. Apparently they came the last night, it was Kesha Bracha, we walk in and uh, he's describing how the room looks to the people around the table who obviously never stood by a Fabrengen. It's Kesha Bracha, the Rebbe is singing and the people are up and the benches, he says it was like a Jewish Super Bowl. The Rebbe Machtaze, everyone's up and down. He says, we felt out of place. We grabbed, they gave us like little white keepers, you know, here we are in this room full of Hasidic rabbis. He said, it took us like four seconds to realize that we are VIPs. And then they put us on the benches so we could see. And suddenly our madrich said to us, you want to go see the rabbi, get some wine? And we were like, whoa, of course. Most of the kids, it was an adventure. But to me, it was like, what? This rabbi is going to give me wine just because I showed up? And they put us on the express line. And as I'm getting closer and recognizing, they told us this is the chief rabbi, you know, the whole world maybe. I'm wondering, like, why is he going to take the time to see us just because we showed up? He said, in my temple, I never met the chief rabbi of the temple. I deal with the assistant, or maybe the assistant's assistant. Suddenly, this chief rabbi of the whole world, the he needs to meet me. Obviously, this yid is a very, you know, deep person, serious person. And as the line is moving closer, he's like, he cannot believe what's happening. He doesn't understand. Shetayid, the rabbi, in that age, whatever it is, this is literally Tafshin Mun Beis Vice Days, Tishrei, or maybe. And we showed up. And he says, I come close to the rabbi face to face. And at this point in his narrative, he pulls out of his, he took a picture of the rabbi looking into the eyes of a 12 year old boy who's dressed with a little kippah and the eye contact is beyond. It's a famous picture. It's been printed in Schmutkin's booklet, other places. And he breaks out crying. Apparently he carries his picture with him 24 six. And he says, the Rebbe looked at me for, I don't know, a couple of seconds. And it looked, felt like a, you know, for five minutes, even though it was a couple of seconds. And he said, I couldn't help thinking why is this rabbi taking me so seriously? No one ever did. And he said he walked away and he knew it's going to be different. He's got to figure out who this rabbi is and what he's about. When the rabbi says to us, we didn't want to hear it and it's harsh words, etc. But 
But to me, part of it is, I take you so seriously. You're serious, you're real. Every Yid, every Nivra of Amrad is serious, every human being, but every Yid, let alone Chassidim, which the Rebbe called Karmish Allah, his own vineyard. So the Rebbe saying, I take you seriously, and I trust you, and you can do it. So that is to me, in a very positive way, the message. Chavches Nisan was very harsh language, very short. Many Chassidim believed that Purim and Zion was really the same theme. So recently I had a chance to watch that Sicha over again, those Sichas, when it came Purim time. And uh, now it's you know, so many years later. And a few things struck me, which I think are helpful. At least uh, I'm going to share, maybe they're helpful. I'm going to make four points that I saw in that Sicha, briefly. First thing is, the Rebbe mentioned in detail that the Ingen of the Altel, the Gul, the Altel, the Tshuva, the Friedrich Rebbe spoke about it and printed it up, Akriva Kedusha, and he even made it clear that when you print something, it's forever. And the Rebbe says, then we know the Friedrich Rebbe is automatically paskining, so to speak, if that's the language, that he's speaking about something which will have Noch Mev Esrim Shana, will be after his physical lifetime. So the Rebbe is trying to say the message is alive, even though it's after Yud Shvat, the Kriva Kedusha, the, the message of Laal Tlugul doesn't change. The proof is the Friedrich Rebbe spoke about it in terms of he said that anything that I'm printing, I want it to be printed, it should be Ladatus. So the Friedrich Rebbe is saying that it's something that may have to be played out over time and therefore it's relevant and alive. I'm watching that and I'm saying, what's the Rebbe saying? He's sitting on a video. Not alone, it was printed in Hebrew and Lahak and Yiddish and everything else. And the Rebbe is, is to me, I felt the Rebbe is saying it's, it, it may not play itself out the way the Rebbe had hoped, apparently, it should play out before Gimel Thomas. But this is something that the Rebbe wants. It should be imprinted and should be on a video. And we should see it and we should sit around so many years later and spend hours each year on, on a regular basis too talking about it. This is Ladatus, meaning to say that this is real. And the, the Rebbe at Alz Bavarin, the Rebbe plan, the, prepared us. And it's not like, God forbid, the plan got messed up. The plan is playing out. That's the first Nakud. Another Nakud is the Rebbe spoke to Barich as one of the signs of Mashiach we see unbelievable good and unbelievable bad. There's a lot of different interpretations. Maybe they're all true. Maybe it's in certain individuals. Tremendous amounts of stuck of people were giving them. In the Jewish world, I think even beyond the Rebbe was referring to, people give away billions of dollars. But the Rebbe spoke there. We live in a world where we see a good sky to which built him ashore, never imagined. And they could say a half the opposite. How many times have you and I looked around the world now, post And on one hand, we see Kefalach. First of all, to our children and grandchildren, the Rebbe is on a video, and all the other things, challenges, Pashat, that should be inspired, ourselves to be inspired, and, uh, and the world, the morality of the world, I mean, in kind of market, we don't have to go into details, the morality of the world, things that were, that were ridiculous even last year are totally normal, and on the other hand, it's extraordinary. Forget about the growth of Chabad. I mean, everybody knows the Pew study. I love talking about it in my community. 38% of Jews, American Jews, had association with Chabad in the last year. In the last Pew study, they didn't even put Chabad on because what's Chabad? It's not a denomination. Somebody said, hello, Chabad is uh, on the map. I don't know what they are, but they got to put them down. 38% of American Jews had some involvement with Chabad. Friends, in case you don't know, that's more than all denominations combined. We have to say it because it's the truth. Almost like the Rebbe complained, but we didn't say there was Nisim. And also, we look at Kerem Chabad. Look at this, Fabrenga. Look at the, the amount of Pu'ulis. Look at the Shluchim B'chol Katsvi Teval. It's out of control. People who never saw the Rebbe going out, Pashat Mesir, Snapper. Look at all the Pu'ulis from headquarters that we're doing on such a high level. Look at the Bachrim. You, you're feeling down one day that things aren't going well. Sit the night with Bachrim or sit with Siddish girls or you're light and you see that it's not less than it was and Yesh Leimer more. So which one is it? It's so inspired, and yet there's so much challenge. So this is obviously what we're seeing. What the Rebbe said in that sikha, it's a simony of Yigula. I'm not sure exactly what the cheshman is, but I am suggesting that uh, the, the Rebbe, I heard from Chaim Gutnik al -Bashon. we were in Melbourne in the Mems. He told us that he had Yechidis, Tavshech of Dalb. And he was complaining to the Rebbe about the way that the world is going crazy. This is the 60s. Compared to today, it was normal. But it was pretty bad. So Yid Lechaim Gutnik is a rab, and a chiddush, you know, chiddush a rab. 
And apparently I wasn't in the Yechidus, but the feeling was, he was complaining to the Rebbe that how are we gonna, how are we gonna raise a generation in a straight an hour? How are we gonna make out of people in this environment? The world's nuts, anything goes. We're redefining life, values, everything. And he said to us that the Rebbe told him, the Rebbe basically told him not to be Nispal. And the Rebbe told him the Nisoyen of this day, every day has its Nisoyen, which is its purpose. The Nisoyen of this day is B'chir Chavshis, total B'chir Chavshis. And that's exactly what we have. And therefore people who are not careful are gonna lose their minds. Conversely, by that B'chir Chavshis, the opportunity for people to really choose. And that's why you have, this is already my own Peter Shashi, you have the two extremes. Talk about B'chir Chavshis in the 60s. Today, a person can choose, a child, a teenager, an adult, anybody, can choose anything they wanna do. You know, it used to be a time, if you wanted to sin, you had to know somebody, you had to have connections. Today, the whole world's at your fingertips. Latev and Ulamutev. So a person could wring their hands and say, this is terrible, this is so scary. So the Rebbe says, this is it. Torah B'chir Chavshiz. Chikibaz Aksudir, I trust you. You can do it. I take you seriously. And you have free choice. You're not doing it because everyone's going to know. You're sitting in an environment where everybody's doing the same things. Everybody can do their own thing today. But in that moment, that opportunity where we could fall to the lowest, we could also fall to the highest. And we see Baruch Hashem to a great degree, Mahal Tzachon, and 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 tefecha menas latfiach and more so from day to day. So that's the second point. Third point. Rebbe was madgish. Ma'aseh b'payil. If you listen to the sicha Purim Am Zayin, again it's echoed later in Chasnissim, but Purim Zayin it's much more Purim Dik, much more explained. So the language is the Rebbe is into the Rambam. Ma'aseh echad. I mean, this is not a new Rambam, and it's not even a new sicha. And the Rebbe is screaming like as if he's in Dekta America, something new. So again, take it or leave it. But this is my own heritage from watching it. The Rebbe is telling us to be foot soldiers. Just do it. A lot of time we spend time in Cheshbenis, especially Chesidic Chabad, and we try to make Cheshbenis Nefesh a whole time. I'm my Chesidish, I'm my holy. Do I mean him at Anemis? You know, the famous Maiz Dal Rebbe, the guy said he doesn't mean Tanemis when he gives Tzedakah, and Dal Rebbe said the poor man means it. Just do it. Just learn, daven, learn chesidus, give tzedaka, do mivtzayim. The Rebbe is saying, I'm taking care of the inyanim, the higher level stuff. Your job is to follow me. And the reason why this is so important is because this is something that the Yitzhahara, uh, it's a chesidus Yitzhahara, and it comes along and gets us down very easily because he says, you're a chassid. Since when did you feel the Rebbe? When did you this? When did you, did you daven with anemis? This is a language that chesidim always did in the past. But in my humble opinion, and the opinion of, of mashpim, the Rebbe, the Rebbe is telling us today the Aveda is give yourself over and just pull the trigger. And uh, I'm going to share a, 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 a sikhah, which I don't know if it's so well known, but it should be. That in Beshalach, Shabbos Beshalach, Tafshin Yud Dalit, after the Rebbe's in Seas, three years of since Yud Tafshin Yud Aleph, or four years since Tafshin Yud Aleph, account. It was extraordinary for Abrenian. Obviously, there's no tape, but it is a transcript in the sikhahs. And look at the footnotes, vices the Rebbe said, some Lachayim. Had a lot of private conversations. Looks like a very uvgulate, very positive. And the Rebbe sort of, I'm, I'm very short on time, but the, the Rebbe sort of basically accepted the Nasiyah, so to speak, Basimcha. Whereas till then there were many Sikhs when the Rebbe complained that who am I, etc. In that time, the Rebbe sort of said that there's three years of a vineyard that's Shnei Arla. The fourth year is the Kilai, is, is a Natarevoy. And then after that, it's yours. And therefore, since three, four years passed, the Rebbe said, sort of in the power vested in me, I'm obviously paraphrasing, by the Bala Kedem, which is the Sidat Enu, I want to make a statement. I don't know how people know this. The same way the Rebbe made a statement, Yud Shvat, when he took the disease, the Rebbe made a statement there. And the Rebbe said three things. Number one is the Aleph, Azdafim, Geben Shveren, Bezara Chayva, Kayoma. Those who need the blessing of children should have it. The Aleph, Azdafim, Geben Shveren, those who need the blessing of Parnassus should have it. And then the Rebbe said, the Aleph was Daphim Potteven from the Moresh Cheder, those who have to get rid of the melancholy should get rid of the melancholy. I'm reading the Sikha, I'm thinking to myself, you're giving a bracha to Anash that you have children. No doubt the bracha was Makuya. You're giving a bracha to Anash, I have Parnassa. It's important. Hello, Parnassa is important. And then what's the third thing? Not that they should be bichsidim, they should be inspired. They should not walk around melancholy. And in my reading of the Sikha, um, it means including and especially this spiritual melancholy. That you know that's a chassidish thing, and you hear from many chassidim. Our lazy Satan tells over many others. 
that went to Yechidus and they complained about this and that, all these intangible things that they don't feel it and they don't know it. And they don't, the Baumgarten famous Yechidus. And the Rebbe said, take the melancholy and throw it out the window. Amalek at sight and higher level chassidim, this was their thing. Today, the Rebbe made a very simple program. I'm the Rebbe. I got you covered. I'm, I, I, I'm talking to God. Just do it. Just do it. My friend Yoski Greenberg from Alaska, he wrote to the Rebbe in that period of time. And the Rebbe was speaking this language over and over and over. And he wrote to the Rebbe, am I understanding correctly that the Rebbe wants an Akbat Sabbath? Like, what does the Rebbe want? What's the program? Very simple, you should follow. By the way, Falgan is not so basic. You have to learn Ambam, you have to learn Sebedam, Mitzvah, and Mitzvah, and you have to be from to watch what you see and what you listen to and what you read. And you have to do it. It's a lot. But don't worry about your Madregis. So he wrote to the Rebbe, is this, is he understanding correctly? And the Rebbe is saying, Lakhlet Sabbath, Mitzvah, Falgan. And the Rebbe answered him, I'm mighty come upon him. I've been saying it for many all along. So that's the third Nukud that I'm taking out from that Sikha. And finally, Practice, this relates very much to the charity fund that they're trying to make for everybody to open up a charity page and get other people to do Mitzayim and be an influencer. It's a fantastic thing. I understand now they're trying to get it done between now and like Bemit, and then it will be expanded. I mean, this is uh, using technology. It's beyond, it's off the charts what technology can do. We're reaching Kol Katsve table. And here they're harnessing and to the leadership with Abmeisha and his whole team and and all the good work. So you, so you, 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 you it, this, but it's right in the sikha. So here's, here's a hergish that I've had over the years and crystallized and from that sikha. In that sikha, the Rebbe says it, and he's screaming it. That since I was trying to figure out what's going on, why is the sheikh not coming? Imagine the Rebbe says, after I heard of it, I only could come up with this, with this beer. And this is the only, what is the only thing? As it's is a shaykh is the chal echad vechad. It's a in shakal echad vechad. Does make men him, does make men her, does make men kal echad vechad. Anashim, nashim, betav, kal, kal echad, something like that. Uh, what's the lotion? Anashim, betav, alat, suzam, and kal, gadol. There's a little bit of, first of all, again, what's the big deal? Of course, every Jew has to take the mitzvahs. What's the Rebbe saying? There's many interpretations, and uh, you know, you talk to Yidin like Sheis Taub and others. The Rebbe said that every Chasa Shtikol Admur, and the Rebbe put a piece of himself. It's all kind of in Ruchnis. I'm speaking from a Balabatish practice of thing. The Rebbe is screaming. Watch the video. It's Tadus. Obviously, it can have dual meanings. The Rebbe is screaming. It's the Sainim as a Shaykh. It's a Kol Lecha. Let's make men here. Let's make men here. An Nashim Nashim B'Tav Alat Suzam and Kol Lecha. So he just said it's individual. He put it on the individual, and then he said Kol Lecha. So here's just a balabatish, a practical thing. When I go and I have opportunity to do a mitzvahim with a yid, I go to my dentist. I'm not officially wearing the mitzvahim hat. And I may not need be a shliach. I may be a nash or even a shliach. I'm just going to my dentist or my doctor or I'm meeting somebody on the bus. And how, uh, how often, chatoyani maske, where I'm lazy to put on the film with the guy. I'm not in the mood of dealing with a stranger. I'm tired. I'll leave the film in the car. The thought has crossed my mind. Don't tell anybody. Let it stay right here. And boss was dying a bit, nishleg and film. You know what I mean? We did it last time, and I'm in a rush, and I'm tired, and I'm not in the mood. But then I say to myself, I've done this numerous times, many times. I say to myself, wait a minute, how many chsidim are now having the same opportunity? How many chsidim are in the opportunity of us to make men in, just make men him, when just make men here, and nash him, nash him, call Allah Suzam and call Lachat. If I put on the film, that's 10,000 film. Because if everybody makes the same cheshbon or 50,000, I don't know, whatever the numbers, I don't know, the numbers of Anashos, Cain, Yerbo, same thing with Neshek and for the women, anything else. So therefore, if I have opportunity to do that thing, I grab it because I know it's multiplied. My taser to Anayin Hara, the Rebbe's hand to the the Soldat, and the Rebbe's Kindelach, pulling the trigger of a whole Katsui table. I'm out of time, but I've seen this in my community, my own, not only myself, my own people, the Yidden in my town, running around. I'll just share one anecdote and I'll close with it. That uh, it was a Shana Rabbe. Shana Rabbe this year. And we're finishing with Lulu and Esrik. And I tell them, you know, the Rebbe told us a very big thing to shake Lulu and Yid. And it's a very easy mitzvah. mitzvah. You go over to him, make a brach and shake. And he has a mitzvah, a mitzvah tater. So I told them, look, the Lulu of him are there. If anyone could take it, bring it home. Maybe you'll meet somebody. There's a Yid in the shul took it. He didn't even own a Lulu and Esrik. He showed up every morning and showed. He didn't even have his own. He doesn't know which way's up. But he heard, I said it, so he took it. I'm in the office a half hour later. 
Uh, he says, I'm going down to the diner. I'm going down whatever to where he hangs out with his friend. I didn't even hear what he said. He came in marching into the office 45 minutes later. Rabbi, 13. 13. So this is a, this is a, a, a thought that it relates directly to the idea of influencers, which is being empowered through this thing. And the Abishal Halfen that we should do our part, but we should do it with Simcha over to know the Rabbi Firtuns and we seeing it. And the Rebbe will slap us out eventually cross the finish line. The Chaim. Chaim, Chaim, Shakayah. Rab Shalom Aisha, you do brenz the Rebbe. You burn all the time with his kashlus to the Rebbe. And the reality is, Tut Altsvas Kent is a very, very difficult task. And we need a lot of Kayach. And one of the only ways to get such Kayach is through his kashlus to the Rebbe. And so this year on Yudal of Nissen, there was an initiative by many Chsidim to again amongst Sidim to sign once again Xabis Kashlus as was done in Yudshvat, Tovshin Yud, and to, through Tovshin Yud Aleph. So anyone who hasn't yet had the opportunity or had the chance to consider it, take a look at unitedfortherebbe.com and take a look at the Xabis Kashlus to submit ourselves once again to the Rebbe, not so that we can give the job back to the Rebbe, but so that we can have Kayach through our Kashlus to do what the Rebbe demands from us to do. At this point, we are going to watch a video that it's a powerful, powerful message that the Rebbe gives to Abal Abbas during one of the Yomachana Yisrael events in Tavshim Emches on Dalit Tishrei. Much success in all your endeavors, privately and also communally, about, especially about this thing that we, we are gathered all together. I'd like to wish you and your family a happy, healthy, and sweet new year. I want to personally thank you for the blessings you spent on behalf of my family. And I want to thank Lubavitch for the facade of his courses and the food of the brain, which is a very good way for me to thank you. I'm blessed to use it all to the good health and the blessing goes to surrounding, surrounding the same way and by showing a living example. And don't be afraid. It is a too big task. It is in your power to fulfill it. To influence all the Jewish people, it is a big task. But nevertheless, every Jew is, has the power to do so because he is going with the help of the blessing of God Almighty himself. Well, I must do my best. Yeah, God Almighty help you. Block of that you have a so we just saw the Rebbe telling us each one of us can be an influencer. Don't worry that it might be too big a task. The Ebishter gives us Kayach, the Rebbe gives us Kayach. If you haven't yet, please go to the One Mitzvah campaign, open an account, take a look at the incredible resource and the opportunities it opens for you. It's a very easy one, two, three step to open an account. Send out a link to your friends, your acquaintances. Don't leave it only to Shluchim because as the Rebbe said many times, every Yid is a Shliach. And the resource makes the job easy because it does the work for you. They will turn around and they will come back to the site and they will find their way through. Someone who personifies the idea that there's no reason to fear a big task because we really have big keiches is our next Fabrenger, Rabbi Ephraim Mintz, director of the Jewish Learning Institute, literally has changed the entire canvas of, the, of shlichus and has empowered shluchim around the world to Ainem and develop to Chlimada Taita to conquer and capture the entire world through learning Taita. When I first went out on Shlichas, I remember asking Rabbi Ephraim about the idea that was proposed to me to go out and be a Shliach that was exclusively dedicated to adult education. I don't know if you remember this, Rabbi Ephraim, all those years back, you said to me, there is no such animal. Every Shliach who goes out to just teach Taita finds himself busy with other things. Today, the entire world has changed thanks to the initiative and the efforts and the unceasing keiches that you've invested with all of the incredible uh, writers and workers and staff that you've assembled at JLI. And so we're looking forward to being inspired by your highly inspiring words. Rebbe Freim. Thank you. Thank you, Rebbe Gurkov, Rebbe Shalom Moshe, and all fellow chsidim for this incredible historic fabrengen, l'chaim, l'chaim. The 
one of the central themes of this Fabrengen is how we are each influencers, how we are charged to rise above our individual self and to be there for others, to sense a feeling, an achrayis, as chsidim, as the Rebbe's children, just as the Rebbe, mahu, just as the Rebbe, his entire, the, the, the Rebbe, the Gansa Rebbe, there for Am Yisrael, for Kal Yisrael. So we, as the Rebbe's children, likewise, are to be there for all of Yidin, to be influencers. When you think about it, this is the Chayra, not something new. We all know that every single Chosid we have in our DNA, this is something that we each have. From Kindvais on, we're raised, we're educated, we're trained to sense another Yid. Every single Chosid, whether we have this title or that title, Shliach, not Shliach, every single Chosid senses that enormous gift that the Rebbe gives us to feel another Yid. With traveling on a plane, which Chassid didn't think about asking another Yid to put on film? Whether we ask them or not, Lepoil, Rebbe Shalom Meshe just mentioned, Amo Frek Benye, Amo Nish, but the Hergish, that sense, we all have it, it's in our DNA. It's in the Nefesh of every Chassid. So what then could Chavches Nissen be? What could it mean to us? What, what is expected of us to do now in addition to that natural disposition of every chosid. So I'd like to, to share, there's a sikha from the Rebbe in Tavshin Mem Gimel, Shabbos HaChodesh, where the Rebbe mentions that the old minig Yisrael was that when you want to count to see if we have a minion, we have 10 people for a minion. So Rashi writes in Sefer HaPardis that the minig is to count the Yidden using the Pasuk, Va'ani b'roiv chazdecha, Va'ani b'roiv chazdecha, Ovoi b'isecha, Eshtach v'alehichal kachecha b'irasecha. This Pasuk has 10 words, and Rashi writes, and so has been the Minig Yisrael to use this Pasuk. However, the Rebbe says, when you look in Kitzur Shulchan Aruch, the Kitzur Shulchan Aruch writes that when you want to count to see, if we have a minion, you should use the Pasuk, Hoishiyo esamecha uvarich esnachalosecha. Frag the Rebbe, why, why was the minik changed? Rashi in Sefer Apardis write something. And why was it changed? Ubefrat, the Pasuk Vani Bereif Chazdecha, Avoy Boisecha, is more apropos for a minion. Avoy Boisecha, talking about the Beisak Nesses, a based Tfila, Kibesi based Tfila. Why does the Kitish Echadar give a different Pasuk? And the Rebbe says in this Sikh and Tafshim and Gimel that perhaps Yashloimar says the Rebbe, since we're standing now, in the times of Ikfis and Meshicha, perhaps, says the Rebbe, the reason for this is when Yidin come together. Aminyin kum tzuzamen, says the Rebbe, when is there a better time to turn to the Eibishter and plead, to ask, to plead for the Geula Shleima. Now, if we think about these two psukim, and we'll notice another difference between the two psukim. One pasuk is focused on the yochid. It's written in the singular. It's about the relationship that a yid has as an individual with the Eibishter. When you look at the pasuk, there's not a single word in the Pasuk that's Lashon Yochid, that's in the singular. The entire Pasuk is Hoshiyo Asamecha, Uvarech Esnachla Secha. It's Lashon Rabbim, and it's not about us. We lose our individuality in this Pasuk. We become submerged and included in Amecha and Nachla Secha. And perhaps herein lies one of the messages that Rebbe, the Rebbe urges us to say, especially in the Sikhs that followed, Chavches Nisim especially in the Sikh of Vayakel, but even in the Shabbos is after Chavches Nisa. You know, there's a fascinating medrash which, which Rashi quotes on the Pasuk concerning Avram Avinu, which I believe has a moyde kehoira to us chassidim today, as we sit and fabreng and try to internalize this day of Chavches Nisa. The Ebershah tells Avram Avinu, Avram, you have nothing to worry about. Scharcha harbe me'oid. You have, Baruch Hashem, you're blessed. You have all this char in the world. Avram Avinu responds, 
to the Ebishta, and he says, surprisingly, I'm not happy with the schar that you gave me. Something's deeply bothering me. What is it that's bothering me? Rashi says, citing the Medrash. Is about to take over. What's to, what toyelas do I have from Eliezer and all that you've given me? Rabbi Say, Shtaltzach de Shaila. Eliezer Eved Avram was the most amazing Shliach and Chosid that Avram even could have had. Eliezer gave his life, the Messias Nefesh, to Avram Avinu. Av- Eliezer led the battles, the Messias Nefesh Mamish, against the Melochim. Not only Begashmis, the Ruchnis as well. We know what Chazal tells us that Eliezer was doyla umashka mitoiras rabbi la'achedim. He was a shliach par excellence. He taught Avram Sichis and Maimorim to the world. Sai when I'm a nefesh. Sai he delivered, conveyed the Torah of Avram Avinu. What more could Avram Avinu ask for? Nevertheless, Avram Avinu says. Avram even was saying that Eliezer, he has no value in Eliezer. How could Avram say that? What could Avram have meant when he, was, when he dismissed Eliezer's Messias Nefesh, Eliezer's conviction, Eliezer's dedication? So based on a maimer of the Rebbe Rashab and Samach Vov, I heard from Rashpia and some Moedu Dekevoy that applies to us, every single one of us, Chassidim today. One of the distinctions between a Eved and a Ben, a Eved is wholeheartedly dedicated to his master. At Kedem Messias Nefesh, as was in the case of Eliezer. Completely dedicated. But an Eved does not care about other Avodim. He wants to do the mission of his Odoin, of his master, but he wants to be the one to do the mission. He doesn't want other Avodim because he doesn't care about other avodim. He cares exclusively about his Rebbe, his master, his Odoim. A child, on the other hand, a Ben, of course, a Ben is Makusha to his father, to his Odoim, to his master. But a Ben, a child, also cares deeply about his siblings. A child is also preoccupied with and concerned with the other Bonim to the father, to the Odoim. Rabbi Sai, the message that Avram Avinu was t- saying to us in this parsha, which is so applicable to us, we, when we fabring about the sicha of Chavches Nissen, it's all about our relationship with the Rebbe. When we hear the words again and again, the words that ring in our ears, the incredible feelings that we had then and we have today every time we listen to this Fabrengin is about our deep relationship, the Rebbe's relationship with us and our relationship with the Rebbe. The Rebbe bet about once. The Rebbe is pleading with us to do something. And we, every single one of us, as Chassidim, we want to be there for the Rebbe. We want to do that which the Rebbe wants from us. And the Rebbe is bothered. The Rebbe is saying, I need you. In this relationship of Rebbe and Chassid, most of our focus is on our relationship with the Rebbe, our hiskashos, our learning the Rebbe's Torah, our being nishazik, strengthening ourselves, and all the things that the Rebbe urges us to do. However, the Rebbe, the message of Avram Avinu is, Avram Avinu tells the Ebeshta, ma toyeles b'chol What toyeles do I have when a chosid is mukushet to me, but doesn't care about other chassidim. When a chassid is dedicated, but Eishem Amayim, as Eliezer was, but he fails to think about others. What benefit do I have from such a chassid? Essentially, it's the Hayoyim Yoyim. The Hayoyim Yoyim of Chavches Nisan speaks to this theme. And the Hayoyim Yoyim of Ches Ov. Vosidi Pu'ule from Chassidus and Yerush Amayim. As a svel der iker avas Yisrael, what value, what good is chsidus and yirushamayim when the main quality is lacking when we're not there for each other? I heard from Shliach Mechanech, so Zayin Zunt Rab Shmulu, that a chosid once approached the Friedrich Rebbe 
And this chassid shared with the Friedrich Rebbe something positive that another chassid did. He wanted to give the Friedrich Rebbe nachas. He wanted to share a psura toiva with the Friedrich Rebbe. The Friedrich Rebbe looked at this chassid and repeated the following words several times. The Friedrich Rebbe said, Zog im, Zog im, Zog im, go and tell this chassid. Sometimes it's easier for us to tell the Rebbe of Surah Toiva than it is to tell a fellow chassid a good word. And this is the message. When we're talking about tut alts, alts is all also speaking about al, tut alts was ir kent us to be there for each other. There's no greater we know and we fabreng about it, but when, we, when we're sit, when we're fabreng and during this 24 hours of tut alts, imagine if we can each take upon ourselves this message of being an influencer, not because it's a job we have to do, but it's to who we are to be as chassidim. To be there for each other, every time we're there for each other, we know that we are causing the Rebbe Nachasruach, the biggest hiskashras that we can have to the Rebbe is when we're there for fellow Yidin, fellow chassidim. I know that a year ago, Chavches Nissen, was the first historic Fabrengen, 24 hours from around the world, thousands of chassidim united. Yashar Kan HaMokim, so Abdan Ken, Rabbi Shleiman Nepashtak, who works Yom and Valayla with the team at 302, and Rabbi Moshe, that, that's driving this whole initiative for chassidim and Anash and Shluchim around the world. After last year's Fabrengen, I know of a chassid. He was very inspired by this, the tumult of Tut Alts, and he, and he took upon himself that every time he does something for another chassid, a favor, a toiva, he has on his phone a notes and he writes down, he, he, he types, he writes down any time he was there for another yid, another chassid. Not about his shlichus, his job, his avodis hakodesh. When he steps out of his individual space and he's there for someone else, he writes what he did, he, whatever it was that he did. And once a month, he would print out his notes from his phone and he would take it to the rabbi, take it to the oil. And he did this the entire year. And he called the file, he showed the, the tut outs. The file name was tut outs. And every day or a few times a week, he would try to find things that he did in the spirit of tut outs, because this is how he was stepping out of his own personal space and being there for another chassid. Now, boys, I imagine if the thousands of chassidim that are uniting today, tonight, if we can each resolve to step a little bit out, out of our individual space, our, out of our individual comfort zone, that we focus on our, even our avodas hakredash, our hiskashos, our, all the things that we do and we're meant to do and, and to grow in that area. But imagine if we could step over and start focusing more and more in an area where the Rebbe says that this is where, this is where we're starting to live in Yemois HaMashiach. This is where, where we're Isha Esrei Ya Azoiru, when we will all be that Achdus, that Achdus Hashem will be expressed in the Achdus of Yidin of Chassidim. We all know the famous story of the, of the Mashpir of Michal der Alter. He was once dabbling with Chassidim in Lubavitch, and suddenly, in the middle of Birchas Kriyashma, as the Bochum of the Yeshiva was davening, a Yid walks into the Besmedrash, to the Zal, and this Yid was a shoemaker, he repaired shoes. And suddenly Rabbi Michal jumps out of his chair, middle of Davin, in the middle of Birchas Kishma. And he goes over to the shoemaker and he points to a Tomim, to a Bacher, Rabbi David Hardokir, when Gdoyle Yatmimim in Lubavitch. And he points to his shoes and he says, and he doesn't say, but he motions to the shoemaker, to the shoe repair person, to please have in mind to fix, to repair the shoes of the Bacher David Hardokir. After davening, they approached Rabbi Michal Mashpia and they said, in the middle of Birchas Kriyashma, the middle of Shema, you're, you're worried about someone's shoes? So Rabbi Michal, the altar, responded and said, what do you think Hashem Echad is? If we don't feel the pain of another Bochir's shoes that's torn, something is wrong with our Hashem Echad. The Sfasem says a similar word. The Gemara says in Brachis, that we shouldn't recite may mosai kord nashma b'shachris. Had different opinions when we could start say when we could say kriyashma in the morning. Achedim oimrim the Gemara says one opinion is 
Mishayira es Haveiroi, Rochig Dalid Amis Viakirenu. When we could recognize another Yid within our Dalid Amis and we could acknowledge his presence and recognize him, that's when we could say Shema. That's when we could say Hashem Echod. Zagdus Fasemes, that before we declare Hashem Elekein Hashem Echod, we have to recognize another Yid, and then we could go ahead and say Hashem Echod. Rabbi Isai, when we talk about, we bring about Tut Alts, there's, if there's one area, in addition to the, all the Divrei Hisoyrus and the Hachlotas that were taken, that, and that will be taken during these 24 hours, during this historic Fabrengen. If we could each find one area, and I'm speaking to myself and to all the toich, am yenoich yeshavis, all of us together, to find one thing that we could do on a regular basis to seek ways that we could step out of our zone. And this is tut alt, not for ourselves, even in the areas of Avedis HaKodesh, our jobs, our shlichesim, but imagine the, the fafletzung of toivis and broches and yeshuas that it will bring about and the Rebbe urges us to do. And this is what, among the many things that are being done, the onemitzvah.org is, is a, a very user-friendly system that was set up for this fabrengen and during this kufa from Yidal of Nisan, Meyev Esrim Shana, that allows us each to, uh, to become an influencer, to be there for others, and, 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 we're, and we're, we're being urged all of us, we could create a personal link on this one mitzvah platform and to try to encourage ourselves and others to partake. I want to conclude with a um, word from Asicha, from the Friedrich Rebbe, which the Friedrich Rebbe actually said, Tofresh Tzadik, here in New York on Brooklyn Avenue. Friedrich Rebbe was here for a, a, a lengthy period during um, 19, uh, 1930, uh, 1929, Tofresh Tzadik. And during Simchas Torah, there's a sicha, a lengthy sicha, which is printed in Kutit de Burim, as well in Sefer Asichas now. And the Friedrich Rebbe asks a question. We all know what the Baal Shem Tif says, that he went up Lemaila to Heichel HaMashiach, and he asked Melech HaMashiach, a mosi kosi mar, when is Mashiach coming? And Mashiach answered, L'Kshaya Futsu, my Nesecha Chutza. The Friedrich Rebbe, Ask the question, what could the Baal Shem Tev be asking Mashiach? It's like Mephari Shi Gemara says the Friedrich Rebbe. We know that the Gemara says in Sanhedrin, Rabbi Shur ben Levi once met Eliyo Anovi, and he asked Eliyo Anovi, how can I meet with Mashiach? And, and, and he asked, and he, and, he, and he showed him how to, how to reach, he, he gave him directions, so to say, how to reach the chamber of Mashiach. And he asked, he, he asked, he finally reached, Apischa de Roim, he came, and he asked Melech HaMashiach, he asked Mashiach, a Mose Osimar, the very same question that the Baal Shem Tev asked, when is Mashiach coming? And Mashiach famously answered Rabbi Shua ben Levi, Hayoim, I'm coming today. Can you imagine the joy of Rabbi Shua ben Levi upon hearing that Mashiach is actually coming today? He comes back, he goes back to his home, and he meets El Yonovi again. And he tells him, Vasigishan, what happened? You met Mashiach, what happened? Rabbi Shua ben Levi says, I was, I was not told the truth by Mashiach. The Omarli, he told me, I'm coming today. And Mashiach never came. So he told him what, what, he, what he meant was, he's coming today. In if we all, if Klal Yisrael follows the word of the word of Hashem, if we all behave properly, in Yishmo, then Hayoim, then he's going to come. That's the story the Gemara shares in Sanhedrin. Frag the Friedrich Rabbi Ashaila. Friedrich Rabbi asks a question. the What did the Baal Shem Tev ask? The Baal Shem Tev certainly knew the Gemara in Sanhedrin. He knew about the conversation that. Rabbi Shurma Levi had with Mashiach, he asked him the identical question, a Mosai Ko'asimar. And why is he asking the question again? And second of all, why did Mashiach give a different answer? The answer was, 
So it's a lengthy sicha, but the Nukuda, and based on the sicha, I would like to share in the, in the few minutes that I have remaining what the Friedrich Rebbe says and what we can derive from that sicha. Friedrich Rebbe says, the Baal Shem Tiv comes to Maila, to Melech HaMashiach, and he says, Mashiach, when are you coming? I know the Gemara in Sanhedrin. When are you coming, Takya? So Mashiach says, you know when I'm coming. The Gemara says in Sanhedrin. I had this conversation many generations earlier with Rabbi Shua ben Levi. That's when I'm coming. When Klau Yisrael will behave properly, when, we'll follow, when they'll follow the ways of Torah and Mitzvahs, that's when I'll come. So the Baal Shem Tev says to Mashiach, the way I see Yidin, the way I look at every single Yid around the world, every single Yid is B'koy Yishmo. Every single Yid follows HaKadosh Baruch the way the Baal Shem Tev, in the, through the Halekia eyes with the Baal Shem Tev, every Yid is on the level of B'koy Yishmo. Ah, says Moshiach to the Baal Shem Tev, Rabbi Yisrael Baal Shem Tev. That's the way you look at every Yid. But other Yidin do not look at other Yidin like that. You see other Yidin in that through those special lens. But fellow Yidin do not see Yidin the way you do. So therefore, Baal Shem Tev, when your lens become the lens of Klal Yisro, when all Yidin will begin to see other Yidin the way you do, then Ka'asima, then Mashiach will come. It's based on the Fidik Rebbe Secha. Rabbi Isai, we know how much the Rebbe pleads with us, and especially including, but especially during the weeks and the sikhs after, during and after Chavches Nisim. The more we're able to see each other and the world through the Rebbe's eyes, through the Baal Shem Tev's eyes, through Mashiach's eyes, that's when Ka'asi Mar. And if there's one thing we can point to in addition to all the hachlotis that were said during this amazing Fabrengen, if we could each begin a little bit to live more in this spirit, we are certain that ko'osi mar. And as the Rebbe said in Chavches Nissen and in the Sichas afterwards, the Rebbe is pleading with us to benkin zichfar Mashiach. The Rebbe is pleading with us not to want Mashiach in Pnei Hatzivui. The Rebbe is urging us that we should have that sense of urgency the way the Rebbe does. And that sense of urgency applies to everything that we do. As Rabbi Gurkhev mentioned, that beautiful liquid that was put together by a group of shluchim, where they show how everything that we do, from getting up in the morning, to how we eat, to how we conduct our business affairs, to how we are as parents, how we are as spouses, how we learn Torah, how we're Mekayim mitzvahs. The book is a must for every chassid. To, it, it shapes our understanding to truly be in a state of yearning for Mashiach. Rabbi Sai, let's resolve together to rise above our individual selves and demonstrate to the world what the world already knows, that Chsideh Chabad are an extension of the Rebbe. And the same way the world is, is slowly and lately beginning to recognize and embrace the Rebbe as the Rebbe of Kal Yisrael, we have the tremendous chus and Achrayis to, 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 to walk that walk and talk that talk and be the eyes and the mouthpiece of the Rebbe. And because of Mamish, we should be Zoycha to Ka'asi Mar, to be Zoycha all together. Chsidim Ein Mishpacha. And when the world recognizes that we are Ein Mishpacha, they will want to be part of this Mishpacha. And as the Rebbe said, eventually, Sof Kol Sof, eventually everyone would be Anash. As the Rebbe once said, Allah, Yidin, all Yidin, wherever they are, and whatever their shittis may be, will be part of this growing family, which will together welcome Ka'asi Mar, the Meheira, the Amenu Mamish Lachayim. I am Lachayim, the of Ephraim. Thank you so much for those rousing words of inspiration that Divra Hisaidudus the incredible Sicha, the Sfas Emes, and the insight about Eliezer Eved Avraham. This was so special. Mo many of us, if not all of us, have learned the Sicha, where the Rebbe explains why Moshe Rabbeinu was so worried when he heard that Yidin were fighting with each other, and he said, and Rashi explains that it's impossible for the Geula to come 
if Yidin are not the Achdus, in that Sicha, it's not in the Mugadika Sicha and Lakota Sichas, but if you look at the Anacha, the Rebbe specifies that the reason that the Rabbeim, all the Rabbeim, were so passionate and spoke so, spoke so frequently about Abbas Yisrael is because this is the only way to bring the Giyula. So, Agresia Shakayach Rabbi Ephraim, we're now going to have the opportunity to watch a clip from a video of a Sicha in Tafshin Yud Zayin Achalamayatsukis, where the Rebbe tells us that none of us have the luxury to step aside and say, let someone else take over and do the job. It's a responsibility and a privilege that lies with each and every one of us. Wie bald das Ehm stört mir nicht und er kann sitzen und lernen, Tero und Kain sei Mitzwes. Ich weiß es Ehm den Afkinine wie ein zweiter Ried, vierzer Huf. Sie er es mit Kain der Amach Mitzwes esse und sie ist er schämer, die Schassam Mitzwes les esse. Sie geht er weg seine Kirches mit seinen Inionen den Nebersten. Oder er geht das weg zu Pari Melech mit Zreim, auf Buim in Jonim Gashmi mit Spissim des Ramses. Was der Teve von Gashmi ist, ist das Wort mit Kini Schome, Kini Ruchni ist was der Lektos. Ist auch das Demut, wie er sagt in Medrisch, Alomo Nikra Schmei Pissim, als Nord Gebui zu Pite Heim Beile. Veloman nikra shmei ramsis, amohot gebuit un nismasmis, vinis ramsis, amohot kinkim ni, idos sidemot skonder nitmato zan zich alei neche, da salvas kol israel la rivin, ze do ze. Un ato gizokt av de uv de rebe de shver, afen de pshat un avas israel. I das nit gemeint a jeden, was er kennt sich mit dem und hat sich mit dem befreundet, nur das meint mir nach vielen a jeden, was gefindet sich bei Katz wie Tewil und er hat sich mit dem Kehmol nicht zusammengetroffen, ist a Femme der Mitzwe von Ahavas Israel und nicht Ahavas Stam und Ahavas der Hagbole, nur sie darf sein der Komecho, Punkt der Seele, sie hat er sich lieb, ohne die des und ohne Agbolis, hat er sich da sein, der Ringen von Avas Israel auf der Zweiten. Und in was da steht, hat er die Jahre, ist er wie bald, dass er ist lechulis, sie will sich her, mehr gefindet er bei Allah schon Tero, und bei Allah schon Mitzvo, ist in der Nini, in der Nini von Tero, Mitzvah, ist ein Nechet, alle Jeden, ein Revin, sehr, 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 sie können sein, der Limo, der Tere, Bischlemus, und der Kima, Mitzvah, Bischlemus, Bischas, Achilek, Funem, was Kol Israel, Kulom, Yachad, ist ein Hakeim, ein Schlemo, ist ein Der, Chilek, Leisator, Nita, Rischolim, Belimo, der Tere, Olim, Bikima, Mitzvah. Und hat er den Minion Monten im Bau und selber viele Beherr geschaut mit das nicht. Ist der meiste Bepeer, soll das Ares, und das soll sein verbunden mit allen Jeden, wo sie sollen sich nicht gefinden. Und das ist ein Junge, was mit Kone toplegen auf Übermorgen und auf Morgen. Und auf ein Herr, es sei später, war in einem Tonne Idee, ad mo, se kon sein, ad dos, ot der Herre feien, was er et machlit sein, als de eise rege geht men ares von dem Golos Kofelum Kupel, li geul a schleimer wa amitis, oder ach mon el islam af le heper. So Rabbi Ephraim talks to us about Abbas Yisrael, Rabbi Simon Fabrengd about the need to overcome apathy, 
in the Sikha we just saw, the Rebbe said that even if we don't feel the Avas Yisrael, we're somewhat apathetic. Nevertheless, it's important for us to recognize that if there is a Yid who's not doing a mitzvah he could be doing, something is lacking in us. So please, each one of us, let's go and click on the link and create an account and ensure that every, every Yid in our circle of acquaintances and beyond does another mitzvah. I once heard a story that there was a shaita, a fool. He was standing and trying to measure a beam, but he couldn't reach the top of the beam. It was too high. He could found a ladder. The ladder didn't reach. He built a pyramid. The pyramid didn't reach. Along came a chacham, a niber chacham, someone who was too wise for his own boots. And he says to him, how about you lay the beam down on the ground and then you'll be able to measure. So the shaita says to the chacham, thank you very much. I wasn't trying to measure length. I was trying to measure height. This has been a very, very long Fabrengen. And we're now entering the home stretch, but it's not a long Fabrengen, it's a high Fabrengen. As the Rebbe said on several occasions, we want Mashiach to come in a manner of Achishena, quickly, now. But the truth is, the longer it takes, the higher an experience of Mashiach we will have. So we are satisfied with Mashiach coming today, but we still haven't reached the height that this Fabrengen is capable of reaching. And so at this point, I hand it over to my dear Chaver, Choshev Shliach from Mequon in Wisconsin, Rab Moshe Rappaport. <laughs>